What's up, guys? <laughs> What's going on, guys? Today we're back with another video. We're gonna be talking about. <laughs> we're gonna be talking about. Um, we're gonna be talking. About, we're gonna be talking about beginner setups for surf fishing in the Northeast. Something that when you a lot of guys when you get into the sport, they don't want to break. The bank spend all this ridiculous amounts of money on band stalls and custom build lama glass rods and stuff. So basically, we're gonna show you the beginner's guide, balling on a budget, mm -hmm. way to catch fish. All right, so <laughs> yes, sir. let's start off with uh, we'll do rods first. We're gonna start with like our favorite surf rod, entry level, entry level beginner surf rod that we think is the best rod for this price point, okay? So we'll start off, we have a nine foot Lama Glass Insane Surf. So this rod is a two piece rod. It's, uh, this is the nine foot. It's rated uh, one to three ounces. And um, this is my rod. I love this rod. Uh, I, I have no complaints with it. Um, it's nice and light and uh, it's, it's durable, it's handled every, every fish I've, I've had on it. Um, I have really no complaints. Uh, the price is about, I wanna say, like anywhere from like, I think 100 to like 130, 140, depending on the size. Uh, Cause it goes from like, I think they make a nine, a 10 and 11. But um, yeah, this rod is great. Uh, it casts well, it, um, it holds up to everything. Uh, for you beginners, uh, the two piece is actually kind of nice. It's convenient because um, me and Anthony were talking before and like not everyone has a Jeep or a truck or one of the expensive rod racks to hold all their gear, especially for guys who are just starting out. So this is perfect. You know, even if you have a car, you bring it down, throw it in there and you're good to go. But um, yeah, um, I have no complaints with it. Only thing maybe like is uh, the grip on it is a little thin. So it kind of feels maybe a little weird when you're casting. But I mean, when you're beginning, you don't pay attention to that stuff really. Like, you know, as, as you get more into it and you see the, these more, the custom built rods and stuff, maybe you'll, you'll start to want different grips and stuff like that. But throw some tape on that bad boy and you're uh -huh. good to go. Yes, sir. So, uh, yeah, so that's the nine foot. We also have the 10 foot right here. And I was surprised to see the difference because this is my 10 foot and Connor had the nine footer. And I was surprised to see how much different um, the nine footer is compared to the ten foot. I didn't. Um, I was used to always throwing this ten foot, and uh, it's a lot beefier rod than the nine foot. But each does well in its own um, applications, whether um, it be in the back bays on the north shore or in um, out front in the surf. So I think if you're fishing on the beach a lot, you're driving down a demo out in Smith's Point. Um, the 10 footer is the way to go because a lot of times the surf is uh, kicking and when the surf's kicking that's usually when the fish is um, the fish are biting the best. So I'll go with the 10 foot and if you're primarily um, a guy fishing in the back bays in the north shore um, in calm water there's not a big there's not a big um, big, big, surf, big yeah. surf big water coming at you. The 9 footer was great. I loved how this felt felt. So all around I think the nine foot is a good place to start and it holds one to three ounces. So um, these are good for diamond jigs, bucktails, minnows, and something like this would be good for those heavier bucktails um, or big wooden plugs, big swimmers and stuff like this that. This is what, three to five ounces? This is um, two to five I believe. Yeah, two to five ounces. So it's a little bit of a beefier rod. Yeah, so... Um... Like he was saying, basically with these two rods, it comes down to like where you're going to be fishing and 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 uh, the conditions and stuff like that. So both are good rods. Um, just to know that like if you're where you're fishing, if if you're fishing more calm water, maybe the back bay stuff like that, maybe the nine foot would be better. And then uh, you know most beginners, you're not going to be fishing crazy surf and and you know places like Montauk and stuff like that. So you you might not need a beefy rod like this, but. It's always something to keep in mind, always something to uh, look for in the future. And uh, next up we're going to go and we're going to take a look, quick look at, this is a rod I use for uh, fluking from the shore. Can't forget about the fluke, that's my favorite. <laughs> so this is a, a 7 foot St. Croix Triumph. Uh, it's rated, I believe, quarter, 
to uh, five eighths. So um, this rod is good. I love this rod. It's nice and light. It's a uh, very sensitive rod, so it's perfect for for those fluke. You know, they're not gonna be destroying your lure. So you need you need to be able to feel those those fish when they're hitting. And um, it's also good for like early season uh, spring stripers. Um, but yeah, I love this rod. I have nothing really bad to say about it. Um, I really want to uh, test it out and do some algae fishing with it uh, this fall. That that'll be that'll be fun. That'll really put it to the test. But yeah, this is a great rod. I've caught tons of fluke, tons of striped bass on this, and uh, yeah, all around this is a great rod. So if say you have uh, one of the bigger rods already and you're looking to do like some fluke fishing from shore and getting into it, this is a good rod to start with. They also make. Uh, St. Croix, I think it's a Mojo, I believe, Mojo, yeah. which is a little bit more expensive than this, and that's also a great rod, but uh, this is like the the cheaper version. Not to say it's cheap, but it, this is also a great rod. I believe this is around 100 bucks. this rod. So yeah, that's another good rod. So those are three good rods. Well, two, and then, you know, these are coming different sizes, but those are two good options for you guys uh, when it comes to rods. So we're gonna leave all the products that we're, we're reviewing right now in the description below so you'll be able to check them out. But next we're gonna move on to reels. You wanna start off? Oh uh, yeah, I'll start off. So um, first we have, this is probably one of the most popular reels that um, entry level guys first um, buy. And this is the Pen Battle 2. This is a 2000 series, and a lot of times guys pick this reel up is because um, Penn makes a great combo for around 100 to 120 bucks around there, and it's probably one of the best um, rod and reel combos you can get for that price for the salt water. So a lot of guys first start out on the Penn battle, and for this for the price of the reel, there's no really complaints to it, you know. I've had one for, I've had a pen bat, this is Connor's 2000, I've had, I have a 4000 in my house, I've had it for four years, I also have an 8000, I don't know why, I never really <laughs> used it. Um, funny story actually, when I first got into surf fishing in high school, about six or seven years ago, maybe 10th grade, I had no idea, I bought a pen battle 8000, it was about this big, <laughs> and I haven't used it in years, it's still up in the, in the, in the shed, but... They're very strong. Um, another Guggen did. Another Guggen thing I did was I have a 4000 and I ran it over with my car. <laughs> Don't ask me how. I had, I had it lined up on uh, the back of my car and I went to back out of the spot. I ran the wheel over and it's mangled. <laughs> it was destroyed, but it it works fine. The handle is yeah. a little bent now, but it still reels beautifully. So for a hundred bucks. Um, for the combo. So don't this, try it at home. Yeah, don't okay, do We're that. not recommending you run your reels over, but he's just... But sick. a pen battle is good to start out with. The only problem with these reels is if you start getting sand in them and salt water, they're gonna, they might corrode and get start locking up on you. Whereas other reels that we're going to talk about that are also cheap um, will be a better option. But a lot of guys usually start out, start out in the pen battle. Yeah. So, as he was just saying, reels... Uh, that maybe are sealed or you know aren't as susceptible to uh, sand and you know other things salt water get into your uh, reel. We have this right here, the Tsunami Shield. So uh, this is Anthony's reel, but this is a great reel. I've used this uh, not his reel, but I've used this like a year or two back. I I, I used one of these reels for for a little bit. Um, great reels. I mean. He could probably tell you. I'll let him talk about this because I know he's been using this a lot this spring. And this tsunami shield is around a hundred bucks, and um, I talk about this in other videos that we might be posting or may have posted already. Tsunami makes great stuff for great prices, and the tsunami shield has to be one of my favorite spinning reels, and for this price point, my all-time favorite reel because it's just a awesome built reel it's very light compared to like this is the 2000 pen battle this is the 4000 tsunami shield and it's way lighter i wouldn't say way lighter but it's definitely lighter holds a lot of line it casts a mile it's just a very very awesome reel i was able to use this in the spring this year for stripers um in the back bays and it was perfect fish up to 26 27 inches um with connor and it, awesome i love this reel and i'm looking forward to using it on the boat this year for fluke and you can also convert this to make it bailless, right? Oh yeah, I forgot to tell you. This Which reel you can make bailless. Not a lot of reels. Yeah, so 
If you like using that kind of van store style of a reel where there's no bail on it, you could they have a um, way you can convert it and take the bail off. It fully sealed, it claims, and so that's good. It's always a plus, but I would always wash it off with water when you get done, um, just like with any reel. And I think that's going to be do it, but I think out of the three reels we're going to talk about right now, Tsunami Shield has got to be my favorite. Yeah, so the next reel we're going to talk about is the Daiwa BG. So this is a 4500, and uh, I'm just going to go over this kind of quick because... I mean, it's pretty simple. It's similar to the 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 pen battle. I think it goes in from anywhere to like from like eighty, ninety bucks to like maybe like one twenty. But um, all three of these reels come in like various sizes, so you can get like the the pens. I think the smallest one is the two thousand. Maybe fifteen hundred. Yeah, maybe fifteen hundred. They go all the way up to eight thousand. It. It's pretty similar, you know, through and through with all these reels. This reel, I, I use this a lot. I fished out in Montauk with it. That was like maybe the only time I ever had problems with it. And that's because I'm an idiot and dunked it underwater and, and got sand in it. But other than that, I've never had any problems. Super smooth. Um, the drag is great. Everything's good with this reel. Uh, it is a little heavy. That's the only thing. It is, it's got some weight to it because like most of it is metal. But um, like this handle's metal and... and some of the other things on here, but it's durable. Uh, it's a good reel. I never really had any problems, like I said, besides when I fucking dunked it under the water like an idiot. But other than that, great reel. Um, all three are good options. Uh, like Anthony said, I think the best bang for your buck is probably the Tsunami Shield. The BG is a great reel too. I really like that reel as well. Yeah. So I mean, you if you buy any of these reels, you're not going. You know, you can't go wrong with any of them. But um, definitely weigh your options, see what you want to do, and. Uh, I think that's it for Rod and Reels. Um, definitely check these out. We'll have the links in the description, like I said. And real quick, we just want to talk about two more things that'll help you guys that are beginners. Now, waders, they have waders that are $300, $400, and they have waders that are $50. And I've been watching a lot of videos on guys that surfish out here, and they all say the same thing. Eventually, they're going to rip. One day, you're going to be out there, and you're going to feel a little wet, but you don't really know until you take it off, and you're going to take the waders off and your whole leg is going to be soaked but yeah. that's just how it goes so you can't go wrong with buying um a cheap pair of waders all right so these are probably the cheapest waders you're ever going to be able to purchase right and uh, i'm not bragging about that because i'm broke but i'm just saying that these i got on amazon for probably like around fifty dollars and uh I had, I've had more expensive waders in the past, and then I've also had cheap waders, and the last pair of cheap waders I had, I had a pair of Hodgman's that were probably like 60, 70 bucks, and I probably got like three years of use out of them, which is pretty crazy, honestly. Um, so I decided, I'm like, you know what, let me go even cheaper this time, you know? So I, uh, I went on Amazon, and I just looked for like the cheapest waders I could find, and I just looked at the reviews, and I saw these. They're called Oxyvan. Never heard of that company before, but shout out to them. Um, so they're great. I mean, I used them, you know, a handful of times already. Uh, they seem pretty well made, pretty sturdy. Um, the only complaint I have about them is there's not much ankle support, which is like kind of what I expected anyways. So, uh, other than that, they're pretty great though. I mean, I haven't had any problems with them. They're pretty durable. They also come with like a, almost like a surf belt that it came with like for free. So, which was pretty cool. It's not like the best surf belt in the world, but. I'll find some use for it. But yeah, so check these out. So next, we're going to talk about um, something that we were talking about earlier. And it's not something that necessarily you need for surf fishing, but it definitely helps. It definitely makes... Uh, more comfortable. Makes it, yeah, exactly. You're more comfortable. makes everything a little bit easier, which is a surf top, right? So here we got... This is a Heli Hansen surf top. Um, I'm not sure the exact like model name of this jacket, but uh, if you just look up like Heli Hansen surf jacket, you'll this will come up. You'll find it. But um, I bought this like maybe like two years ago, I think. And dude, I love this jacket. I mean, I have no complaints about this thing. Um, it's light, but it's still it's still thick enough. Like the it's made out of uh, I forget what the material is, but no water is getting in this thing. Um, the sleeves, the end of the sleeve is like a neoprene cuff, so, and it's nice and tight, so nothing gets in here. I mean, it, it's awesome. I love that they did this. And then, 
They also have this uh, zipper, like the three quarter zip, and they put this material on the inside. So even if you unzip this just to loosen it up. Get some air in there. Yeah, you're not getting wet still. So this is still gonna cover you. It comes with like this little pouch where I usually keep like my phone or, you know, little things that I need, keys, whatever. And then the bottom is, is like this uh, strap. string strap. I can't think of the word. You get what I'm saying. Doesn't really matter. But uh, this is great. Um, also, the hood is adjustable. I don't really know why you would adjust your hood, but if you want to, I got you. So, yeah, that's basically that. Um, yeah, so that's basically what we think that you really, you know, the, the, the most necessary things you need to start and begin in surf fishing around Long Island. We and also have a video that says what kind of lures and plugs you start buying when you're just starting out are three favorite lures. So you should check that video out if you want to take it to the next step and then start getting the lures so you can actually go out and catch the fish. Yep, for sure. So uh, basically that will wrap everything up. That's all. And one more thing, check out our merch on Instagram. DM us. Uh, by the time this video comes out, we'll probably have a bunch of other stuff. But uh, hit us up if you're interested. We got and 75 hats coming in in a bunch of different colors. So it's yep. going to be... Very nice. Getting ready for summer. So catch them up, guys. Hopefully this helped. Hopefully you guys are just getting started. Uh, we uh, made it a little easier for you. So uh, that's it. Until next time, guys. Peace.